On February 11, 1861, U.S. President-elect Abraham Lincoln addressed his supporters in Springfield. This is the place where I have lived for a quarter of a century. This is where my children were born, and one of them is also buried here, he said. He said that he didn't know if he would ever return to Springfield. He said a big challenge was waiting for him in Washington. At that time, the southern states had declared independence while Lincoln had yet to take the oath. Lincoln had no experience with the presidency. Then he faced the greatest challenge in American history. Lincoln's train left Springfield and arrived in Philadelphia after nine days. Lincoln addressed his supporters at every station along the way. But a threat was waiting for him in Baltimore. Lincoln's security in charge warned him that his opponents were planning a knife attack on him in Baltimore. The threat alert said that when Lincoln would address his supporters in Baltimore, somebody would stab him. So Lincoln's security personnel secretly changed his train. Lincoln was taken to Washington on another train. But the train he had left was never attacked. Some say that Lincoln's security in charge overreacted. But his actions damaged Lincoln's reputation. Because when the original train arrived in Baltimore, Lincoln's supporters were disappointed when they didn't see him. It was a scandalous story for the press. Pro-rebel newspapers used this story to portray Lincoln as a coward. They published cartoons and news stories claiming that Lincoln was a coward who changed his train and hid behind a seat. In cartoons, he was shown peeking out of train doors with a terrified face or running away from death with long legs. The U.S. newspapers were also divided over this issue. Some newspapers were supporting Lincoln. But pro-slavery newspapers never missed an opportunity to criticize him. In these circumstances, Lincoln took the oath on 4 March 1861. Military forces with cannons were deployed to guard the oath-taking ceremony. Snipers were positioned on the rooftops. Lincoln's supporters expected that he would abolish slavery in his inauguration address. But when Lincoln started the handwritten speech, he didn't announce the abolition of slavery. Instead, he said that he would not interfere with the slavery system in the states. He declared that he had no authority over the states to do that. But he also threatened the rebel states. He said, in your hands, my dissatisfied countrymen, and not in mine, is the momentous issue of civil war. He said, the government will not assail you. There can be no conflict unless you are the aggressors. He said, you have no oath registered in heaven to destroy the government, while I shall have the most solemn one to preserve, protect, and defend it. After his oath, Lincoln went to his office. But the people who visited him in his office thought he was a non-serious person. Now his supporters are disappointed. They thought that Lincoln didn't care for his country anymore. But it was not the case. The rebel states were so close to him. He could see the rebel state of Virginia through the White House windows. The rebel capital, Richmond, was situated in Virginia. Rebel President Colonel Jefferson's office was also in that city. Lincoln could not ignore this threat. His supporters wanted a quick attack on Virginia. But Lincoln didn't want to start the war. He was waiting for some mistake from the rebels. The rebels made the mistake of attacking a Union house. Post, Fort Sumter, in South Carolina. Then Lincoln ordered his army to prepare for the war. At that time, the United States didn't have an active standing army. Lincoln ordered the recruitment of 75,000 volunteers. They had to serve for three months. These volunteers started training, and a war environment was created. The northern states under Lincoln were superior to their southern rivals. The Union had 23 states and controlled the largest area of the country. While 11 rebel states controlled a small area, the Union states had powerful industries to manufacture ammunition, while the southern states had no such facilities. Over 20 million inhabitants of the northern states were a great source of recruitment. The total population of the southern states was only 9 million. Four million of them were slaves, and the rebels could not trust them. The rebel states had only one advantage. Their president was a capable military commander. Jefferson Davis led the American forces successfully in the war against Mexico. This was the situation when, on 21 July, 1861, Lincoln ordered his general Irvin McDowell to attack Virginia. Many Americans considered it a sort of stage show. Virginia was just in front of Washington. Only the Potomac River separated it from the capital city. When the Union troops advanced, hundreds of citizens gathered on a mountain to watch the battle. These were rich people. They had come in carriages with food and drinks. It was like a picnic for them. The Union troops were also feeling proud and walked into the battle like heroes. 
Ninety of them had no idea how horrible the battle was. Union troops led by Irvin McDowell lost heart when they crossed the Potomac River and encountered real weapons. Their morale was damaged by the blasts of cannons, dead bodies, blood, and screams of the wounded. The Union troops fled the battlefield. Then the spectators also panicked and ran. They left their food behind, and many carriages were also broken during the escape. These people locked themselves in their homes. This was the first battle of Bull Run. Lincoln didn't sleep that night. He questioned many people returning from the battlefield about the battle. This was a surprise defeat. Lincoln ordered three of his other generals to launch attacks against the rebels. But the commanders were slow in their response. Lincoln thought that the generals looked handsome in their uniforms, but they had no experience of war. He understood that war could not be won only by the generals. So Lincoln prepared himself to meet this challenge on his own. He got books on military strategy and studied them all. It was by reading books that he had become a lawyer. So he became a bookish general. He sat with his military officers and planned everything by himself. His commanders had to follow his orders, otherwise, he dismissed them. First of all, he retired his aging military chief, Winfield Scott. Then he dismissed General Irvin McDowell, who had lost the Battle of Bull Run. He also dismissed many more officers during the war. Now the war was in full swing. The Union Army was attacking or defending on various fronts. There were days when thousands of Americans died in a single battle. Thanks for watching.